and then we cannot un and all the way that God will lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his arm and we'll follow till we die we will understand better by and by well it's by yang by oh when the morning and you know that all the saints are on together and and we will tell the story how we over and we will understand it better by and by. And temptation, here the snares often take us unaware. And our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word of deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best but we'll understand it by and by well it's by yang by oh when in the morning man you know that all saints are gone together and man we will tell the story how we overcome and we will understand it better by and by interesting happy new year Happy New Year or just New Year? <laughs> Happy New Year or just New Year? Happy New Year, right? A lot of things we can uh, we can choose not to be happy about, uh, but you have to live your life focusing on what you your blessings are as opposed to your burdens, uh, because life is too short to stay in a rut too long. Amen. And we are more blessed than we are burdened. Is that can you attest to that? You have, if you do inventory of your life, you have more blessings than you do problems. For every one of your problems, for every one of your burdens, for every one of your disparities, for every one of your trials, for every one of your tribulations, there are three things you can say thank you, Lord, about in the middle of that. So it certainly is a happy new year, and it's uh, it's, it's just it, what makes it happy is that we're still here. Um, we're still, we're still here uh, in spite of the fact uh, that we could have been gone, could have, right? All of the things that almost happened, that could have happened, all of the people that made plans for this year, and unbeknownst to them, they had an appointment that, that they had no idea of, right? And sometimes we don't get that until it happens up close and personal to somebody we know and have a personal relationship with then then we're baffled we're baffled and we're thrown off and we're taken aback because uh, she wasn't even sick or he wasn't even sick or you know I just saw him the other day and uh, and it and it it really baffles us but the reality is that could have been anybody in here's reality one thing God never promised is he never promised that we wouldn't leave here that's not in the list of his promises. Uh, but he does tell us to be grateful. Uh, he says, I be anxious for nothing but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your requests known unto God. This means in spite of what's going on in your life, always be grateful because you never know when you will utter your last thank you. Did you hear? You never know when you will say thank you for the last time. So he says, always be grateful, right? So it is a, 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 a great new year, a happy new year, uh, and it is a blessing to be here. 
Uh, this morning, I want to invite your attention to Revelation. I taught this on Wednesday, and I wanted to start out, started out the year with this because, uh, uh, and this will be a series. I, I, I have concurrent series, and I wrestled with that. Uh, and there were some who contend that uh, we, you know, there are, well, you should do the same thing and preach the same thing all day. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, opinions are like noses. Everyone has one. Uh, but I, I kind of follow the, sp the, lead, the Spirit's lead, you know. And when I, what, I, what I mean by that, I'm not just talking about regarding you. I'm talking about regarding me. It is a travesty to study with just you and I. It is a tragedy for, and a travesty for any leader, any teacher, any preacher to study with only the church in mind. It leads to personal lack of growth. It leads to personal lack of development. And if you think for a moment that you can feed people something that you're not eating yourself, then you're sadly mistaken. So God not only deals with uh, and I don't not only pray about what what to what to feed and what to teach the people of God, but concurrently to that, God deals with me. And and I have to get it first. I got to get mine first. And sometimes it hurts when I get it. And so if the word of God cuts me, it's not gonna calm you. You know, when the word of God cuts, it cuts, as the older folk used to say, a going, a, a guan, and a common, right? And so uh, this year, uh, you know, looking back, inventory, God has really dealt with me uh, personally uh, in ways uh, that, uh, that, that leave me seeing my need for him. And that's what the Word of God does. It, it, it gets you to stop patting yourself on the back. And it gets you to stop holding your head down. It, it, it equalizes it. Because there are things in your life that you hold your head down about. And you can be ashamed of. And you can be down about. And you fall into a rut. The Word of God comes and says, lift your head up. And then there are things that we walk around arrogantly and conceited and prideful about. And the Word of God says, humble down. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That's how you know the Lord is trying to get you to come to him. I'm, I, son, I want to see you one day. Son, you've been singing about me. I want to see you face to face. But if I leave you to yourself, you'll never see me in peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to invite your attention to the book of Revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And we're going to look at chapter 2. <clears throat> and I'm not going to push too hard, as was advised me, all right, by my doctor, because I would hate to have a setback. So I just want to just want to talk to your spirits today. And... Uh, Let's begin reading at verse number one. <clears throat> Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And I'm underline the seven stars and seven golden candlesticks if you write in your Bible. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast what yeah this is it's right in verse number four it says right there at the end of verse number four is where it is. It says, because thou has what? Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's make sure we together now. We're on the same bus. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. 
and do the first works or else. And whenever Jesus says or else, we need to pay attention. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will, will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Is that in your Bible? And I want to talk to you this morning about getting back what was lost. Otherwise, getting back what was left. Because according to this text, it wasn't necessarily lost. It was left. Now, I don't want to just delve right into this text because it would do an injustice to the Word of God. I believe as the people of God, you still need to be educated. You don't need to start where you read. You need to understand the background of where you read. Amen. And that is called context. Everybody say context. In other words, you need to understand that the book of Revelation just doesn't grow in a field by itself. It's part of a system. That system is called the Bible. It's part of a system. That system is called context. It's part of a system. That system is called recipients and a letter and writing and someone talking. It's called, it, it, that system is based upon situations that happen surrounding that system. If you come in and see part of a story, you'll, you'll, you'll be tempted to come to a conclusion that has nothing to do with the story. And so it's important to understand what's going on, who's talking, the situation behind it. When we read the book of Revelation, the unveiling, it's called Revelation because the, the Apostle John, who was the youngest of all the apostles, as a matter of fact, uh, he was the, uh, I believe, uh, historically, he was the last remaining of all of the apostles. He, was the, he ended up being the oldest and around the longest because he was the youngest as he was chosen. Uh, for the name of Christ, for his ministry, for, uh, for his conviction, for his belief, got expelled, or, or should I say condemned, or should I say exiled, to an island called Patmos. Okay, what was the island, the island name? It was Patmos. In New York, there's an island where inmates are put, and that's called Rikers Island. I grew up there, and they and was surrounded by water, and you couldn't get away. It was, it was where you were exiled when you were a prisoner. Well, in this day and time, John, for preaching the gospel of Christ, for sharing his conviction, for sharing his faith, uh, the, 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 the government didn't agree with that. And because of that, he was arrested, and he was exiled to this island way out in the middle of the water, and the island was called Patmos. And the Bible says that when John was exiled on the island of Patmos, that he still had a connect with God. He still had to connect with Christ, and that's good news right there. That seems like a very simplified point, but that means that you don't lose a disconnect with Christ because you disconnected with people. <laughs> and that's good news to know because I'm not always going to be connected with people. Sometimes I don't want to be connected with people. Sometimes I exile myself. Sometimes I want to be all by myself, but it's a wonderful thing to know that, that watch this, that that you don't need two or three gathered together in his name to be connected to Christ. Now, I know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there am I in the midst. That's what Jesus says. He says, I'm in the middle of you when two or three are gathered. But it does not say I'm absent unless there are two or three. And the Bible says that it was Sunday. John was on this island called Patmos. And the Bible says that John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, I think something can be said about that. He, in other words, I was where I was, I always am in, on the Lord's day. Even though geographically I wasn't where I, I always was, spiritually I, I am where I always am on the Lord's day. I think no matter where you are in the city, no matter where you are geographically, you ought to be in the same place spiritually on Sunday. I don't care if there's a snowstorm and everybody gets snowed in and we cancel services because we don't want to risk people driving on icy, uh, icy roads to get here. On the Lord's Day, even though you're not in this building, you ought to be in the Spirit. And what is that being in the Spirit? In other words, his mind was at the same place uh, even though his body wasn't right? Coming here is not about coming into the building and sanctuary and the ambiance of worship. It's about the spirit of worship and where your mind is. And you can be in the right geographical place and in the wrong spiritual place. Amen. 
So he says, he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then Jesus begin, begins to minister to him and reveal some things to him. Thus, the name is, of this book is the book of Revelations. That's where that name comes from. Because John was exiled on what island? Patmos. And Jesus revealed some things to John while he was exiled on Patmos. So everything you see in the book of Revelation all of this eschatological stuff, and that's just a fancy word for a uh, way of saying things concerning the end of time. All of those were revealed to John while he was exiled on this island called Patmos. Thus, this is the book of Revelation. It is, it is the only book of prophecy, I uh, consider the only book of prophecy in the New Testament. So, Jesus tells him this, and there are seven churches in the Asia Minor area, and now John, Jesus is revealing to John what to write. He wants, to, he wants John to write a letter to these churches, but not simply to these churches, congregations, okay? I, like, for instance, there are several congregations in the southern, southern sector of Dallas. There are several churches in South Dallas, okay? There were was, there was seven churches in Asia, in the Asia Minor region, and Jesus spoke to John, and told John, I want you to write a letter to these churches concerning what I observe about them. Okay? He told, tells John, while exile, I want you to write this letter about what I see about them. Okay? What Jesus is saying about what I see concerning them. Okay? Because what we see and what the Lord sees are often two different things. Okay? And that's just individually. Individually. I mean, we see each other one day a week, but, uh, and we see our Sundays best, but you don't know, you know, you see all the struggles. I don't know everything that's going on in your home. I don't know everything that's going on in your personal life. So we get a snapshot of each other as the church on Sunday. But God knows, and I'm, I'm not so naive to believe because I know my own life that this is all there is to what, I, to what I'm seeing. Amen? I know there's more to it. And so we can't deal with each other based upon what we see. We have to deal with John. Jesus says, this is what I see. So watch this. In verse number one, and we're going to move expeditiously, but I want you to get this. It's important that you understand the context. He says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right. Now, uh, uh, you, some of you uh, have heard uh, uh, the preachers of the congregation called the angel of the church, and I wanted, I wanted to... I wanted to clear something up because angel is often associated with innocence or perfection or holier than thouness. The word angel in this text simply means messenger. Your mailman is an angel in the definitional sense of this word. Okay? He's a messenger. That's all that's talking about. That's all that's talking about. Okay? Uh, because I don't want you to catch me on the wrong day and I utter some words I shouldn't say and then you walk away saying that he's supposed to be an angel. No, I'm not. <laughs> that doesn't mean perfect now. Amen. Uh, you know, it means messenger, okay? The one who God put there as the messenger for the church. So now watch this. So watch this. Let's put it together contextually. Jesus is talking to who? John. Telling John what to write not simply to the church, but to the messenger of the church. Okay? So what, what we're about to see is not only the message that Jesus wants the church to know, but it's the, mes it's, it's the message that he wants the messenger to know. Okay? Remember I started out saying I, I, it becomes a travesty for me to study with you in mind? Jesus is saying this is not only for the church. This is the messenger. Okay? This is not only for the people sitting in the pews. This is for the man standing in the pulpit. It cannot be that everything we preach and teach only applies to the congregants and not to the pulpit and not to the leaders. Everything that comes forth from the word of God is equal opportunity application. Equal. If it applies to you, it applies to me. So the, but first line is is that it applies to the messenger so he says write this to the messenger of the church of Ephesus 
He says, these things saith he that holdeth the seven. Now, this letter, now, this letter is coming from John by way of Jesus, I mean, from Jesus by way of John to the messenger of the church. And he says, uh, he says, uh, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, uh, who walketh in the midst of of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, we need to understand what that is. How many of you, you know, when you study the Bible, if you read over that, you'll miss it. And, and I, again, I believe, I believe study and being a student of the Word warrants that we just don't read over things. We know what they mean. So let's see what, let's look at the, let's look at the ledger. Verse number 20. Somebody read verse number 20 of chapter 1. Uh huh. Read. So the seven stars. Whenever you see the seven stars in these blocks blocks of text, the seven stars are the messengers of the church. Read. And the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. So Jesus is walking among the candlesticks. He has the stars in his hand. Do you see the imagery? You see the ledger. The seven stars are the seven what? Messengers, right? The, the ones that, that give the message to these churches. The candlesticks are the congregations. So the Bible, so Jesus walks among the candlesticks with the seven stars in his hand. He walks among the churches speaking through the messengers, okay? That, that, the, that word, he's speaking through the messengers, right? So watch this. He's, uh, that's important to know because he says, I know thy works and thy labor. Now, again, let's put it in context. Is he talking simply about the church's works? Who is he talking about? Huh? The messenger. Remember, the first line and the first application of this is to the messenger. Write this to the messenger. Now, the messenger would tell it to the church, but it was first to the messenger. All right? And this hit me like a ton of bricks, and it almost brought me to tears, you know, over my life and things. And I said, oh, Lord, I hear you. He says, I know your works. I know your labor. Read. And thy what? And thy uh huh. And how, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast what? Tried them which say. So watch this. Jesus, Jesus writes this. John writes this. Jesus speaks this to John. He wants the messenger and the church to know that I know how how hard you work. I know how hard you work. I know how many ministries you have. I know how involved you are in the community. I know how many hungry people you feed. I know how many sick people you reach out to. I know how many people you teach. I know how many young people whose lives you impact. I know your works, and I know your soundness. I know your lack of tolerance, your intolerance of certain things. I know how intolerant you are of people who say they're apostles and they're not. I know how firmly you stand on sound doctrine. Okay? He's saying, I see you. You're looking good there. You're looking good in your doctrine. You're looking good in your busyness, in your ministry. You're doing okay. I know. I recognize your work. But look what he says. He said, look, he, not only that, he says, and I born, and, and, and I see your consistency. I see that you're still hanging in there. Through fire, through vapor, through smoke, through trial, through tribulation, through discouragement, through despair, you're still doing it. And Jesus is saying, I commend that. I have recognized that. I honor that. I acknowledge that. But it's almost as if Jesus not only commends what they got going on, but he points out what tarnishes what they have going on. Because you can have a lot of good things going on and have one something going on that tarnishes every good thing you got going on. 
How do I know that? Because this letter was to the angel of the church. So I looked at me first. And you can have a lot going on and have two or three things that mess up everything you got going on. And instead of looking at all you got going on and patting yourself on the back and saying you're doing good, and instead of listening to what all the people are saying, commending what you have on, and instead of leaning on your reputation, it's best to pay attention to what Jesus sees. And as a congregation and as individuals, I don't care how commendable your work is, pay attention to what Jesus sees because it's very possible that every good thing you have going on can be tarnished by one unmaintained, ignored, unkept quality. You know, there are a lot of nice houses and homes in the city, nice neighborhoods. Uh, but don't you know, you can have a real nice house, immaculate, marble floors, chandeliers, right? All on the inside, high ceiling, right? You can have, you can have antiques hanging everywhere. Your house, you can go in your house and just the overwhelming feeling of awe and comfortability can be there. I like to think my house is like that. Our house, where we live, we try to keep it up. But you know what? Not cutting your grass will make the whole house look terrible. As a matter of fact, it will not only make the whole house look terrible, it makes the whole any of you live, live someplace and you look over at your neighbor's yard and you say, man, you upset because of your neighbor's yard. Because now the whole neighborhood starts to look like it's depreciating in value. Now, it doesn't matter how many immaculate decorations you have in your house and how nice your furniture is and how antique the things you have and how, how, how beautiful your house is decorated that one unmanaged thing can tarnish. Now, it doesn't take away the value of the beauty inside the house. It just tarnishes it. And sometimes, and, and I know this applies, you know, this again, this applies to me first. Sometimes we don't want to look at the things that tarnish. We just want to look at the things that can be celebrated. But eventually, the things that tarnish overtake things that can be celebrated. So he says, uh, you're consistent. You have not fainted. Right? He's talking to the angel, but he's talking he's primarily, the, primarily the angel. And how do you know primarily the angel? Because the, he's walking among the candlesticks, but the stars are in his hand. And Jesus will not deal with where he's walking among before he deals with who's in his hand. Are you understanding? That doesn't mean that everybody's not in his hand, but he's saying, These are, this is my instrument. And I can't walk freely among the candlesticks if my instrument is not where he needs to be. Does that make sense? Now, how does that apply to us? You know, uh, 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 all of us, all of us have to make sure that the first person we do maintenance on is us. It's us. You know, and, I, and I'll say this, and again, this is a series, so I may stop it short, but, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I want to be, I want to do better with that too, not letting y'all out right at Bible class. But, but uh, you know, when I go into, I don't go into, I don't do barber shops anymore. There's a brother here that cuts hair. He's a ma he cuts hair. He's really good, really good. So I just let him cut my hair, and that's that's better. I don't I don't deal with that. I mean, I said the barber shop, and you know, you know, they talk about everybody once you leave. <laughs> you nice. So I just but 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 when I was going to a barber shop, uh, and if it was a new barber shop, you know, the, the first thing I use to gauge. I'm going to sit in that barber's chair 
uh, as I look at his head. Uh, am I the only brother that does that? You go in a new barber shop, maybe you're out of town, I need to get a cut. You go in there, and the first thing I do is a head check. Because I don't want anybody cutting my hair who doesn't look like he takes pride in his own. You see the principle? You see the principle? That's why this is to the angel of the church first and then to the congregation. That's why we have to maintain ourselves first. Because no matter what our verbal testimony is, our visual testimony will always outshine our verbal testimony. So you got verbal testimony, you got visual testimony. And some of us have a verbal testimony that's loud, but a visual testimony that's invisible. Okay, okay, so, so us first, right? So he says, nevertheless, y'all ready, ready to see this? Watch this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Okay, he commends him, he gets that out of the way. I know your works, I know you're working hard, but I've got something against you. Simply this you lost your first love which means that their works and their patience and their labor and their toiling and their soundness was right but it was powered by something mechanical it's very possible to become such a mechanical church and a mechanical person that that uh, or even a minister, even in ministers and elders and deacons and people in leadership, it is so easy to become mechanical that you forget that you're not dealing with ministries, you're dealing with people. That you forget you're not dealing with systems and you're not dealing with a Bible class, you're dealing with souls. You're not dealing with a beach, you're dealing with grains of sand. And when that happens, you work hard, but your work becomes less and less heartfelt. You become detached from the very work you're doing emotionally. He's not saying, he's not saying you don't do the things you used to do. They work harder. This church in Ephesus works harder now. They labor harder now. Okay? And if you want to see the history of the church in Ephesus, read Acts chapter 19. They started under some rough situations. I mean, there was a riot in the city of Ephesus. There were seven sons of a man named Sceva. I mean, Paul got ran out of Ephesus. Uh, 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 there were, you know, Apollos preached in Ephesus and Aquila and Priscilla. Uh, uh, I mean, Aquila and Priscilla had to show uh, Apollos the way more perfectly. Acts chapter 18, the end of Acts chapter 18 into Acts chapter 19. And then Paul left Ephesus, came back in Acts chapter 20 and talked to the elders there in Melita. And he told them, I, you know, I want to just say farewell to them. There was a love relationship there. Paul said, I've got to leave. i got to leave you upon my departure grievous wolves shall come in the Bible says they had such a close love and bond that when it was time for Paul to leave the church in Ephesus that the elders fell down on his neck uh, and they hugged and embraced each other they had a love relationship then when you read the book of Ephesians you see in Ephesians chapter 5 where Paul commends them for their love in Ephesians chapter 1 he commends them for their love but something happened between the inception of their journey and this point where they became mechanical they became busy but not progressive they became they, they moved more but progressed less and movement and progress are not the same thing and I gave this illustration Wednesday you know uh, 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 I go I, I'm back at the gym now and I walked two miles but I didn't go two miles <laughs> are y'all hearing what I'm saying I walked two miles but I didn't go two miles now how could you walk two miles but not go two miles it's called the treadmill after I walk two miles on the treadmill I'm not two miles further from where I started from I did, I put the same energy into it, 
I sweated like I would have, got tired like I would have, checked my pulse from time to time. With all of that hard work, when it's all over, I'm in the same place I was where I started. And it's very possible for individuals and congregations to become so busy, but not progress. Busy trying to be busy. Busy being busy for the sake of your conscience, for the sake of saying we're doing. But if that busyness is not motivated and powered and motorized and mobilized by love, what Jesus is saying is you need to go back to the first initial motivation so that not only are you moving, you're moving forward. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to stop here. And we'll continue this because he gives the remedy. So you, do you understand what happened? They lost their first love. He gives the remedy to that. But I've got to stop here because I'm on water pill. I'm not complaining. I'm thankful. But I'm going to have Brother Dedrick or Brother uh, Jones to do the invitation. I've, I've literally got to go. Thank you, Al. never done this in my life like that, y'all. <laughs> but uh, that, that, is, that is one interesting thing about it, though, is that it's not always about what's comfortable for you, and it's not always about staying within a certain box, staying within a certain status quo. But uh, uh, several things uh, that Brother Hamilton shared from the book of Revelation. One interesting thing about about the whole about the about the letter to this particular church is the fact that when you look at when you look at everything that had been named, Ephesus was one of the very few churches in the Bible, or uh, and one of the very uh, few letters in the Bible in which uh, uh, Paul didn't have to defend himself. When you look at Paul's writing, the Pauline letters. Uh, that was one of the letters in which he did not have to start out defending his apostleship. When you look at books like, uh, like Galatians, he had to defend who he was because folk didn't believe who he was. But nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, 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 the church was a good church. The letter was a positive letter, but Jesus still found issue. <clears throat> and it lets me know as, uh, as an individual, as a congregation, uh, even as a preacher, that you can be doing well, but at the same time, you can still be checked. And what this is about, what this period, what, 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 what this point in the service is about, is us doing an honest assessment and an honest check of yourself. Now let me just ask you, uh, are you really where you know that you need to be in Christ Jesus? I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about uh, 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 what you did before. Even, even Janet Jackson had a song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? I'm not talking about all of, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that where you are right now, because all of us have been at great heights, we've also been at valley lows, but where you are right now, can you, metaphorically speaking, can you rest your head in peace, knowing that all is well with your standing in Christ Jesus. If you look at, at, at the inventory, if you take inventory of yourself and you realize that I'm not where I need to be, <clears throat> just like there was a remedy in Revelation, there's a remedy now. The remedy simply is to get yourself right. Well, what is it that I need to do? It depends on where you are. If you, if you are not a child of God, if you have not been baptized into Christ, the first thing that you need to do, first thing that you need to do is, is obey the gospel. 
You've heard the word. You know about, about Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You've heard that. Do you believe it? Do you believe that he really died? That he was really buried? And that he really resurrected by the power of God? Do you believe it enough to, to repent? Do you believe it enough to say, you know what? There's some things that, I have, that I've done, that I'm doing, that is not in line with how God would have me to be. And then, and then are you willing to turn away from those things, from the thing or the things? Are you willing to, 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 to turn your back, to walk away from where Satan would have you to go? And then are you willing to, to confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue? Are you willing to confess the name of Jesus? And then not only that, but then are you willing to put him on? I've just, I've recently uh, gotten over, gotten over being sick. I had the, I don't know if it was the flu, the cold, I don't know what it was, y'all. But uh, I left work on a Monday and, and I was so sick, I stayed out. I stayed out the entire week, the rest of the week, a couple weeks ago. And, and one of the things that, uh, uh, as I got well, that I had to do is when I went outside, I'm, now I'm from Wisconsin. I pride myself on being able to bear the weather. I'm, I'm not, I ain't soft when it comes to the weather, but I've gotten, I've gotten climatized to Texas. And so now, so now uh, 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 I can't go out without my coat on like I used to do back home. 30, 40 degrees, you know, we out there, we, we literally chilling in Wisconsin, but I could have my coat off. Can't do that no more. And so, so when I, when I go out now, I have to make sure that I have some protection on. I have to make sure uh, 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 that, that, that I'm, that I'm able to deal with the elements. And I got news for you, you cannot deal with the elements of this world, spiritually speaking, without having on the protection of Jesus Christ. And you get that protection through through baptism. Baptism is what hides you in Christ. So, so if you're in that category where you where you have not obeyed the gospel, where you have not obeyed uh, uh, Christ, that's the first thing that you need to do. But if you're already a member of the body of Christ, somewhere you've walked contrary, somewhere you've forgotten, somewhere uh, 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 you know that you're not living up to what God would have you to be, then you get that right as well. That's the remedy. That's a remedy. And I'm not sure where you are and where you stand, but uh, if you're not a member of the body, this is your opportunity to, to become a member of the body of Christ. If you're already a member of the body, you just need to get something right. We beg you, we plead with you to do it right now. As together we stand and as together we sing, we ask you to come. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing cup? Are you washed? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb, and God are bless you, you as you come. Honestly, look at yourself. Grace, look at where things I are, and if are you can make corrections, go ahead and do it. God bless you as you come. Don't let pride keep you land. in your seat. Don't stand there are knowing that there's some stuff that I can get corrected and, and leave it the way blood, that it is. And I so one of the worst places that we can be is knowing that we're wrong and not and getting it right. You come to Christ on this morning. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Are you willing to come to Jesus knowing that I'm not, I'm not the greatest, the but I am what God would have me to be? And are you walking daily? Will you come to Christ? We'll come to Jesus. In the blood of the land. Make up in Do your mind right now to serve you rest him. Each moment bird in thy cruise. Look at where Stay you are. If you are need to get you it right, do it right now. In the blood of the Don't land. Don't be bound by pride. And are you, are you washed? washed? These have come. What about in you? In thy blood. This is your opportunity in as well. In thy soul. Cleansing blood, Soul cleansing of, blood the of the land. And Jesus. are you crowned, mirrored, spotless, are they white? 
that's no I you I in the blood of the land and are you are in thy blood in thy soul cleanse and blood of the land and are you gum bird spotless are they white that snow are you white in the blood of the land and lay your side the garment that a stain with sin and be washed in the blood of the land and there's a fountain glory for the soul lying clean oh be washed in the blood of the land then are you washed in thy blood in thy soul cleanse and blood of the land and are you gum earth spotless are they white that snow are you washed in the blood of the land then are you washed in thy blood in thy soul cleanse and blood of the land and are you gum earth spotless are they white that snow are you washed in the blood of the land amen amen let the church say amen truly we have been blessed this morning by uh, our preacher being back and by him being back in full force and the message we hope and pray have caused you to do a self-examination uh, it was not uh, just about him but God also meant it for us uh, to find out uh, if our, our, all of our efforts just because we're doing something or is it because of our love for the Lord amen a lot of times we come to church just to be here uh, to satisfy our own self being. So thank you, uh, Brother Hamilton, for that message on this morning. Uh, we have uh, those that have responded to the message this morning. We ask you to stand when we call your name. We have Sister Tina Adams. Sister Adams is coming, requesting prayers from the church. We have Brother Leonard Miles. Brother Miles says, first of all, giving honor to God, the head of my life, pray for me and my family. I'd just like to say, here is the thing, the thing about the first, every time you look at it, it changes because it looks at it, and that's changing everything else. God, hide me behind the cross so men can see less of me and you can see more and you can see more of me Lord let me stand Lord let me stand in the need of prayer God bless you we pray for you Sister Regina Elverton she's asking the church to pray that I stay focused on my Christian faith and be the Christian that I need to be that is pleasing to God. God bless you. Sister Barbara or Lewis, I must be talking to my dad. Sister Lewis uh, says, I've sinned. I repent of my sin. I ask for forgiveness. Please pray for my family and I. Thank you. God bless you. I've sinned and I repent that sin. I ask the church to pray for me and my family. God bless those that have come. We're going to ask you to come that we might form a uh, prayer circle and all of those that 
uh, would desire to come and to stand with them. If you stand in the need of prayer, come and join us in this circle. Let's touch and agree. Let's touch and agree that God might do something made amazing through us and for us as Bishop Gabe leads us to the throne of prayer. Uh, a few things before we pray. We want to, after we finish our prayer, we want everyone to remain uh, seated for some instructions that's going to be given by Bishop Rawls. Also, as you leave the auditorium, the sanctuary, there are some CDs in the basket at the door. Make sure you get one of those CDs and pass them out to someone that you meet throughout the week. Don't take them home and keep them for yourself. Pass them out to someone, as, you know, somebody that you might meet as a stranger, and that way they can hear, have a, uh, uh, hear a word from the Lord from the, from the congregation here at Mountain View. At this time, let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Kind Father, we come thanking you for your, your message, Heavenly Father, and also for your messenger. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word that we've heard, Heavenly Father, that we examine ourselves to find ourselves to be faithful to you and to thy word, Heavenly Father, and also to, to recognize the things that we've done contrary to thy will and make those corrections according to thy word. We come on behalf of Heavenly Father, those that have responded to thy word, recognizing they stood as guilty different from thee, making that change in their lives, Heavenly Father, that it might become better because they have repented of those things. And also, Heavenly Father, yes, I ask you might forgive them as those things as well. Continue to be with our minister, Heavenly Father. Continue to hold him up and strengthen him as he goes through his journey as far as getting back to preaching, Heavenly Father, and, and, and the things that he loves to do. Continue to be with his family and also continue to be with his family here at Mountain View. Help us, oh Father, always be, be mindful of the things that we come in contact with people that they might see you because they see us. These blessings are in our son Christ's name. Amen. because we want to get to uh, Bible class, amen? Uh, I need a couple of young man, men, if you could, to help me by, by helping me pass these out. Uh, two or three. Young is young, is young brother, that's all right. Uh, no, you, 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 young is in your heart. You're young, you can, that's right. You can, you can do it. Uh, two weeks ago, we said we asked we told the congregation that we were going to be updating our database uh, because we switched programs and we and we're, we're we're trying to update it and do some different things and, and get a correct count of, of who actually attends Mountain View uh, and it's been several years since we've done something like this uh, so what we have done is commit ourselves to today trying to get that done what we are going to what we're asking is we're asking everybody to fill this form out if you can write if you can write then we want you to fill it out uh, if here you can have you can have this one I think there's some and there, and there are there are some on the hospitality table if I didn't bring enough back and somebody say how, how young how old do you have to be old enough to be able to write your name really and if you can't write it then have somebody because we want to we want to uh, account uh, of everybody. Now, what's going to happen is when you fill this out, as you walk out the doors, I have the youth and some members of our security team who are assisting us. They are going. They, we are going to ask you to do two things. One, uh, on the back of the form, there's a place for you to just write your name big and bold. Write your name big and bold there put this up, they're going to take a picture of you because the person who's going to be updating our database may not know everybody's name. Okay? They're going to take a picture of you, then you can put this down and take a picture without that. You can take a picture that's not a mug shot. Okay? And we're asking everybody to do it because because quite frankly, I mean, if you, we just want to be real about it. There are people here and, 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 and some of us don't know who you are. We don't know you, we don't know you by name, but we know you by face. And so, and so if we have a picture to go with the database and the person who is putting the database together, it would be very helpful for us here to know who our, pe who our people are and, and, and how we can get in contact with them. So please, we're going to do this as quickly as possible. We have people in every door. 
All they're going to do is take two pictures. If you fill this out, they take your picture, and we'll be done with this. Is that all right? Amen. Uh, any questions? When you're done with, when after they take your picture, there is a tray on the hospitality table. On the hospitality table, just place your your sheet, your information sheet, in that tray. Now, now if you want to take a, a a picture as a family with your family, you can do that too. We don't have a problem with that. Yes, ma'am. is if there are family members in the home and they are not baptized, do we want their information uh, under, the, under the family listing? If you have that information and, you, and you, you're comfortable giving that information, yes. If they're in your home, yeah, sure. Because at some point, if they're, if they're, they're members of the church, or if, if we would like to be able to contact them. list other family members even if they're not in your home if you want if you want to, to, to give us that information yes you can okay any other questions per person every person we want everybody to take a picture all right all right thank you very much and as soon as you fill that out and you, you walk out and make sure you walk out and to make a left and go to Bible class. Amen.